in talking about these chemical reactions, a lot of reactions we can say are reversible reactions. And that means everything we've looked at so far has really been, right, a reaction starts at one side and ends on the other, when we've been reading left to right all the time. Well, the reality of it is there's a lot of reactions that are what we refer to as reversible, and that's that they can occur in either direction. They can go from reactants to products, or they can go backwards from products to reactants. So what you see here is carbon monoxide plus water goes to carbon dioxide and, and hydrogen gas. So the forward reaction we refer to is the one that goes from left to right, and we recall the reverse reaction going from right to left. And you can see here this bidirectional um, equilibrium arrow basically says that the reaction can go in both directions. Now, we say the chemical reaction or a chemical system is in equilibrium when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. All right? So at equilibrium, because of that, the overall net concentrations of the reactions and products don't change. Because anytime you're making more products, you're also making more reactants because they're going back and forth the same. All right, so that's kind of the, our definition of equilibrium. Equal rate of the forward and the reverse uh, reaction. It does not mean necessarily that there's equal amounts of everything there. It just means that the forward and reverse reaction are occurring at the same rate. Okay, so let's talk about Le Chatelier's principle. So Le Chatelier is some French guy who a long time ago um, came up with this uh, principle that basically said if you have a chemical system at equilibrium, right, so think of equilibrium as in its happy place, equal forward reaction and equal reverse reaction. If you have a system at equilibrium and you disturb it somehow, right, and that means you're going to add more of something, so you can add more of reactants, you can add more of your products. That the system is going to try to counteract that disturbance to relieve the stress. All right, so here's our chemical reaction. We have car CO, carbon monoxide, plus oxygen forms carbon dioxide, CO2. So what happens if we increase the amount of the carbon monoxide, the CO? So we're going to increase the CO. So what the what Le Chatelier's principle says is, okay, we add more CO. Okay, that's going to screw things up a little bit, so we need to get rid of it. How do we get rid of carbon monoxide? How do we get rid of that? Well, we react it with oxygen to form CO2. So we're going to make that reaction drive that equilibrium more towards the right. So if we add more CO, we want to get rid of it. The way we get rid of it chemically is by making this reaction where this, the extra CO is going to react with O2 to form CO2. So what we can say is that if, it, if the levels of carbon monoxide go up, what's going to happen to the level of O2? What's going to go down? Because some of it's going to be used to react to form some CO2. Similarly, levels of CO2 are going to go up because you're making more CO2. All right, so here, what I want to do real quick is um, I want to try to draw this out. So I'm going to make it so we have, so the red ones are going to be CO. All right, and then the blue ones are going to be oxygen. So I'm going to make two of those. And then Let's do green are going to be my CO2s, and let's make four of those as well. All right, so let's say at equilibrium we have, um, so this is going to be green, this is going to be red, and then the oxygen is going to be blue. So at equilibrium we have four carbon monoxides, we have two O2s, and we have four CO2s. But then someone comes in and dumps in a couple extra COs, all right? And now our system is like, oh, we got too many of them. However, what we know is that we can react and take two COs plus one O2, and we can make two CO2s. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take two of these, and I'm going to take 
one of these, they're going to react together to form two more COs, right? So now what I'm going to do is go in and I'm going to erase because we reacted and formed these. So these will go away because they reacted to form the new greens that were over here, right? So by adding more, we kind of shifted the equilibrium to the other side. So by adding extra CO, we don't worry about what happens with the, the CO itself because we said we increased the amount. But the question is, what happens to the amount of O2? It went down. We started with 2. Now we're down at 1. Over here, CO2 went up. We started with 4. Now we have 6. Right? So that's Le Chatelier's principle kind of at work. And we can do that for any of the components. So here is another one. Right? Same reaction, but in this case, what happens if CO2 is increased? Well, if CO2 is increased, right, you add more CO2, the system wants to get, get rid of it. The way it gets rid of it is by breaking it down and forming more oxygen and more carbon monoxide. So whenever you increase CO2, what's going to happen to levels of O2? They're going to go up. What's going to happen to levels of carbon monoxide? They're going to go up because the equilibrium is going to shift, what we would say is it shifts to the left, right? It's going to drive the reaction to the left. And what happens if something is removed, right? So here's a different reaction. Um, in this case, it's ethanol goes to C2H4 plus H2O. So let's draw our picture again. So let's say we have a bunch of ethanols. So let's give ourselves four ethanols and... Four C2H4s and four waters. Okay, so that's our starting uh, situation. But now, it say we're going to remove a product. So let's remove some waters. So if we're going to remove a couple waters, let's take these away. Boom. Oh. All right, so we took them away. And what happens is the system's like, you can't take away my water. I want more water. So the way that we make more water to counteract what just happened is by taking the ethanol and breaking it down into the products. So again, we're going to drive the reaction to the right, which means that the ethanol is going to go away. So let's take away one ethanol. Whenever an ethanol goes away, what we're going to do is we're going to make an extra C2H4, and we're going to make an extra water. So now we moved the reaction to the right by getting rid of some ethanol. So by removing the water, the concentration of ethanol itself is going to decrease, and the concentration of the other product is going to increase. All right, so that's the summary of Le Chatelier's principle. So if you look at it here, this kind of summarizes all in a table, so you can just memorize the table if you want. Um, but again, the way that it all should tie together and make sense is kind of what we talked about on the previous slides.